Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is March 22nd and we'll be discussing the markets and how to uh, position yourself accordingly. So let's get right into it. Where I want to start is we're looking here at the VIX, which is the volatility index for the S&P. And you can see here we're at very elevated levels at 65, we were at 85 earlier. And we can see that the peak of the 2008 financial crisis was 96. So we're definitely in very uncertain times and there's a lot of volatility in the market, which also means there's a lot of opportunities uh, right now to take advantage of. So if we look at the stock market here, this is SPY, which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. We're down about 32%, um, which is an interesting, uh, which is quite a decline and a very rapid decline too. It's one of the fastest crashes we've ever had. So I personally am starting to get interested here to start buying and adding to my long-term holdings. Uh, but that being said, there is the opportunity for, for more down, downside here. And I've kind of leveled this here where maybe we can get back to these 2015 highs and maybe we see you know more of a a 38 call it a 35 percent uh dip which would really be the uh, where i would definitely start to be adding more um so a lot of people are looking at this as kind of a flash crash and i think once um, coronavirus cases in the u.s start to die down a little bit people will be regaining more faith uh, in the stock market, in the economy, but I also think we're going to see longer term disruptions uh, that are coming from coronavirus. And I think that's going to have a spillover into other markets uh, such as real estate. And we'll get into there that in a little second and like where I'm seeing the opportunities there. Um, because for me personally, myself, um, I'm actually trying to get invested into the stock market more, but I also have a lot of real estate experience and that's really my main um, investment tool. And so I'm looking to take advantage of perhaps, you know, a, a more prolonged recession. And there'll be a lot of opportunities out there, especially for uh, people who are interested in wholesaling or people who have uh, experience in insurance. There's going to be a lot of opportunities for you there. So we'll be getting into that into this video and future videos as well. Looking at coronavirus, we can see that uh, the total number of cases has begun to expand exponentially as the virus has really gone and contaminated uh, the whole world. If, if we go here visually on the map, we can see that. And I remember when, when coronavirus was really just a little thing happening in China and now uh, it's spread really throughout the entire world. And so Europe has gotten it pretty bad. Uh, obviously, East Asia, Australia, South America. And, and this will probably continue to get worse before it gets better in certain stages. So, you know, you got to think about how people live in different cities and different areas in the world. For example, where the outbreak first started in Wuhan, um, it was a very a densely populated area and, and maybe not so sanitary, especially where the outbreak first started. And then I would say, we'll look at Europe as well, places like Paris and London, they've had epidemics like the plague before because people live in very close quarters and very close to each other and cities are a little more dense and close together. It's easier for a virus to spread in that kind of environment versus say, you know, the Midwest in America where people live in countrysides and um, don't live so close together. Let me see if I can turn off my notifications. No. Not connected. All right, hopefully this helps. Anyhow, so I, I think here in the US we've started to doing we've started to do some quarantining here here in Miami we have at least um, we can see here that so I'm on this website here we can see globally everything the number of new cases is going exponential uh, here in the US 
the total number of cases is also starting to rise. So we're really rising in an exponential manner here. Uh, some good news, the total number of case, daily cases in, on March 21st was down for the first time. That's a positive uh, thing. And total number of daily deaths is also declining. So hopefully we can keep on that trajectory. We can see here that the, the number of daily cases is going down. And if we look at a country like South Korea that had a really good response, we can see that the number of cases is starting to flatten out. And uh, so you can see here the number of daily cases coming down. The number of active cases also is starting to go down. And total deaths, unfortunately, still rising. Um, so hopefully the U.S. can see this type of response. And we can see here um, from February 15th, really, it grew all the way until March about 10th. So call it about 25 days, and now they've been declining for another 10 business days. So there's hope here for the U.S. However, going out longer term, um, I think a lot of businesses will be affected by this. Um, me personally, I live in Miami, which is very much a tourism and service-based economy. And uh, I can see it on South Beach. A lot of people who have hospitality or hospitality-related jobs, bartenders, people who work in hotels, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they're not making money this month. And so not only are they losing their jobs and they're not gonna be able to spend, but also they're going to be affecting their landlords because if they can't pay their rents, then their landlords can't pay their mortgages and their landlords also can't pay their bills. So it kind of starts to have a knock-on effect. And that's why me personally, I'm, I'm interested to see how this pans out a lot of people think that we will have a recession for a quarter, maybe two quarters and start to get better. And that also lines up um, kind of with the seasonality uh, of things. So looking forward, this is my uh, weekly report that I'm sending out. If you're interested in getting the weekly report to your email, um, there's a link on my website that I'll also put uh, in the description here. You can go ahead and sign up uh, just put your, your email address here on the side and you'll get a weekly newsletter detailing exactly what I'm doing in my portfolio and uh, you can follow along or make your own trading decisions. I also have a number of resources for free for, for you to get started. So going back to the topic at hand, um, a lot of people forecasting a recession. A lot of people think that we may have more downside in the future. You know, it's very unlikely that we'll just go down, you know, chop sideways for a while and then just keep heading higher. Because when you look at historical um, times of volatility, look at 2008, that whole down market lasted 532 days. Um, this decline here in 2011 lasted 175, 287. Uh, this one lasted 112 days. And we're only on day 28 of coronavirus fear. So we're still very early in this. And I want people to have kind of like a longer term view. There's going to be multiple opportunities for you to invest and take advantage uh, of what's going on here. So there's three scenarios. We either start, we either bounce here and start going up. We either bounce here, uh, go lower again in the year and then start a recovery. Or we enter into a more prolonged recession or bear market and we want to be prepared uh, for all three of those cases which is why i'm positioning most of my portfolio in cash i am also investing in qqq which is a technology etf i, I don't do any stock picking right now because picking stocks is just way too risky like i've seen a lot of people get interested in buying things like royal caribbean and delta and other airlines that are being hit really hard. You don't know if those companies are gonna survive. You haven't looked at their balance sheet. What if they go into bankruptcy? What if it takes two years for the stock to recover? It's just too much risk. That's why I much prefer something um, that's proven, which is the technology sector as a whole. And I would rather invest into 500 companies. I'd rather invest in the US stock market and the US economy than one individual company that is affected by the US 
economy. So I hope that makes sense. That's my personal investment philosophy. Looking at the seasonality of the S&P 500, we can see here that uh, really January up until May is a good time. So there's a saying in the stock market, um, sell in May and go away, which really refers to the summer doldrums, which is people go on holidays, they don't spend as much, and you tend to see the stock market kind of chop out until September, October, where we have some kind of a sell-off or a fear event, and then we start going into what's called the Christmas rally, uh, which is September to December, that also rolls into January, March, until May. So we're, we're entering the end of a good time to be investing, and really, me personally, I'm cycling into more defensive sectors um, before getting ready to make bigger moves uh, in the end of the year. Uh, so this week I'm looking to buy QQQ, a small little position, and I'm also getting interested uh, in gold. So if we go through the markets, this is an exercise that I love to do um, almost every day. I look at the markets and I say, what's going on? What is everything telling me? So the stock market is down. That means everybody is afraid. Um, the VIX is high. There's fear. This is the dollar index, which has... Uh, had a really good week or two, uh, which is telling me everyone is selling everything and entering um, and going into cash, pretty much. The value of US dollars is going up. Uh, crude oil is down. That's due to a lot of things. OPEC um, is all the oil producing countries are essentially pumping out oil really cheap and in huge quantities because when the price of oil is down they actually need to pump more oil to make the same amount of money so it's kind of a self-destructive cycle and it also hurts a lot of oil producers in the u.s that are only making money if uh u.s if the price of oil is above 50 dollars uh, a barrel which means we'll probably have a lot of bankruptcies in the oil and energy sector domestically which is going to cause a lot of uh, bonds and, and debt instruments uh, to potentially be in default, which might hurt banks, and it will definitely hurt those investors. Uh, so that's another reason why they might have spill-on effects. I'm looking at gold. I think gold is a good play. Um, it's a safe haven. Right now it's sold off because when everything is crashing, people sell everything to get cash, and gold is something you can always turn into cash pretty quickly. So that's why it's down. But I think as, pe as people start seeing the recession get worse and also recover, people are going to say, hey, I need a safe place to put my money that's diversified away from the stock market. And so that's the case for gold. I was also getting interested in silver, which has crashed pretty hard. We had a little bounce here. Um, why I'm interested in silver, I, I read a lot of articles online that the price of silver is crashing on these paper markets on the stock market but if you go to to the store so right now it's trading at twelve dollars an ounce on through through slv which is a etf but if you go to the store and you say silver and let's say we look for one ounce silver rounds let's see how much they're selling for they're selling for 16 15 17 $17 an ounce, $19 an ounce, which is pretty much around these prices here, so and a little bit here. So the physical market is lagging the paper or the computer market, if you will. So maybe the computer market's a little sold off and people were taking very risky and speculative positions. Looking at Bitcoin, Bitcoin's an investment that I like long term. Um, the only bad thing about Bitcoin right now is it's definitely in a downtrend. And so I think it's possible we revisit this $4,000 to $3,000 per Bitcoin level. And so I'd be more interested in buying down here and maybe even at the $1,000 per Bitcoin level. Looking at it as a much longer term trade or investment rather, where we eventually break the all time highs and maybe we see a 50 or 60 or $30,000 Bitcoin. You know, if you bought in at 1,000 and it went back up to 30,000, you'd be up 30, 
30x on your money. So $1,000 would go to $30,000, $10,000 would go to $300,000. And once, you know, let's say you risk that amount of money once and that actually were to work out and you cash out, then you can take your $300,000 and start doing real estate deals, diversifying back into the stock market and making a lot of other, other moves. So that's why I like uh, these kind of crypto assets. Sure, it's more risky. It's kind of like investing in technology or the internet uh, back in the day. But you know, with more risk can potentially come more reward. And that's why I'm interested in uh, Bitcoin in long term, but, but not right now. So to wrap up the video, because it's getting a little long, I'll talk about my portfolio, which is something I'm really excited about. I'm creating a portfolio that everyone can follow along with. And so what I'm gonna be doing is detailing uh, the moves that I'm making and why, and then how you can set up your portfolio the way that you want it to be. So right now what I've done is I've made two contributions uh, to my Roth IRA. Um, it's the first time that I do it, I'm not, I didn't come to the US as a, a citizen, so I actually um, started a business here. I'm here in the US on an investor visa, and so I never took advantage of these uh, tax uh, advantaged accounts that have a huge amount of benefits up until now. So without going into long stories, I made two $6,000 contributions. Uh, into my Roth IRA into two different accounts. The first one was through a regular brokerage account, which, which, with, uh, which was with TD Ameritrade. And I'm also looking at interactive brokers. I may switch over. Um, I haven't decided yet. I'm doing my research on both, uh, but I've used both in the past before and they're both great tools. Uh, so I made a 2020 contribution for $6,000. And then I created an LLC that my retirement account invests in, and that's where I'm gonna be making my long-term uh, cryptocurrency and real estate investing uh, strategy. So that's more of the alternative assets and the alternative, alternative uh, strategies go, and then I have my regular brokerage account to take advantage of what's happening in the stock market right now. So uh, currently, both of these accounts are 100% in cash, but I'm targeting, at least in the brokerage account, uh, to have 60% stocks, 8% uh, real estate, 17% gold and silver, and 17% cash and bonds. So over time, I'll be building this portfolio to, into that direction and actually giving you guys alerts as to when I'm buying, say, like a QQQ, uh, the gold or crypto or any of those assets this is gonna be something where we follow along. So that's my plan right now. I'll also briefly mention uh, my real estate plans, which are kind of go on the side, which is what I noticed and what I was thinking about is it's going to take one to two months for real estate to start really hurting um, because that's gonna be more or less how long it takes uh, for landlords to start feeling the squeeze of people losing their jobs, especially in hospitality and tourism and sector jobs, uh, areas where those types of jobs dominate. So for example, I live in South Beach and a lot of people who, who live there also work there. And so if, they're not, if their jobs in restaurants and hotels are shut down and they're not able to pay their rents, those landlords are going to be feeling the pinch. And especially in a recession, there may be some opportunities to buy uh, real estate at distressed prices for a good deal, whatever you want to call it. And so what I'll be looking to do in the future will be uh, maybe partnering up with a few people, uh, thinking about doing some direct mail strategies where we can find some real estate um, for good prices. And then not necessarily, well, I will be looking to invest uh, my own money as well, but also allowing other people to co-invest into these buildings and looking to buy you know, 18 to 24 unit apartment buildings on South Beach, which when you know, the recession blows over and coronavirus goes away, you know, South Beach is one of the hottest markets um, nationally and cap rates are super compressed. They go down to 4%. There's a huge opportunity to double, maybe even triple your money uh, over a course of multiple years, but in some really safe, uh, good real estate. So that's where I see the opportunities today, guys. 
I uh, super appreciate you watching my video. Again, like the video, sign up for my newsletter. I'll be posting that once a week and I look forward to speaking to you a week from now. Thanks and take care.